Before we start this video, I just want to say thank you to Sheldon HW, one of my True Believer patrons on Patreon, for requesting this month's request video. If you'd like to know how to request a video, head on over to patreon.com slash thebirdman to find out how. Disney logo alone now takes up 33 seconds of screen time, followed by a retro Disney logo that itself takes 16 seconds. So this is another 50 seconds of logo sin. Hooray! And yes, I am aware that 33 plus 16 is 49, but just like the creepy dude that hangs out around high schools, we round up. In the beginning. Narration. For a film like this, Narration is basically a requirement. Most people are unfamiliar with Polynesian myths and traditions, so sending narration here is especially bad, considering you're some guy from Tennessee. There was only ocean. Pretty sure at no time in Earth's history was it only ocean. Science is giving this movie the finger, and I'm right there with it. I'm sorry, Jer, but it is you that science is giving the middle finger to. The early Earth was, in fact, one point only covered in water. Volcanic activity changed that, but land only compromises 29% of the Earth's surface today. Not only that, but dude, you're watching a f***ing Disney movie about Polynesian deities and you're invoking science. Slap yourself. Some began to seek Te Fiti's heart, voyaged across the vast ocean to take it. How was he able to find it? Was Maui just flying around until he happened upon it? And even if he did just happen upon it, did he assume since this island vaguely looks like a woman on her side in the fetal position that he was in the right place? And that assumption was correct? If you were paying attention to the opening narration that you send and the fact that the narrator just told you the earth was covered completely in water, it's quite obvious that he was in the right place considering there were no other islands on the entire planet. Not only does Maui have shape-shifting abilities, he has the ability to transport whatever object he's holding to the appropriate appendage of whatever animal he shifts to. If he didn't have this power, he would have to store the heart between his toes before transitioning to a hawk, so it would be in his hawk talents. Birds in humans' physiology isn't one-to-one -one analogous, so think of it this way. While birds of prey do occasionally use their talons to stand on, they are mainly used for grabbing things. Their forearms are used for locomotion, otherwise known as flying. Humans use their hands for grabbing and their legs for locomotion. So it follows that as a bird, using his talons while flying would be like a human using his hands while running. Maui tried to escape, but was confronted by another who sought the heart. What can I say? It's exposition. It can't be exposition if it's still part of the narration. And please, spare us your 15 million merits level singing ability. As long as we stay on our very safe island, we'll be fine. Moana recycles the overprotective dad character arc from Finding Nemo and thinks I won't notice. Considering the ocean is perhaps the single most dangerous environment on the planet, it makes sense that both Marlin and Chief Tui would be overprotective. Motunui is paradise. Who would want to go anywhere else? <coughs> While the king of this island debates isolationism with his mother, his diaper-wearing toddler is about to drown. Points out things that are happening on the screen. Thinks I won't cliche. Look, sea turtles are given one shot. They either make it to the water or they don't. I'm not sure that overly assisting this one baby is actually helping anyone, since he is weak and will likely be killed at sea early on. Weak? Okay, this is ridiculous. The turtle was being harassed by like three birds. Baby turtle was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I mean, try putting a human baby in an area full of wolves and see if that motherfucker becomes Mowgli. If I were making this movie, this is where a dickhead barracuda would show up and eat that f***ing idiot turtle baby who couldn't even reach the sea without help from a human toddler. Actively seeking to make movies worse cliche. As the ocean gives her a new hairstyle, I'm left to wonder how wrong everything I'm seeing would be if it were another human doing it instead of the ocean. So, you're giving the movie a sin not for something that happens, but for something that could happen? Oh, there you are, Moana. What are you doing? You scared me. She scared you? You're the one who let her wander out into the ocean and stay there long enough to drown, you big asshole. Okay, earlier you sinned Tui for being overprotective, and now you're sending him for not being protective enough. Jeremy is every girlfriend when you ask them what they want to eat. Don't walk away. Man, Disney sure does love to age up characters through song, don't they? 
By show of hands, who thinks that was a sin? Since no one in the comment section is raising their hands... You are the future of our people, Moana. As much convention as this movie bucks, it's still another Disney movie about a princess who doesn't want what her destiny holds. Yet another non-sin. You're essentially saying, hey, this movie is for kids and they're trying to teach them a valuable lesson. Ding. Baby the Rock Chippendale dancer kid here is super inappropriate and suggests this island's males begin thinking about sex and procreation at age 8. That's absolute shit and you know it. Nothing about this child dancing is inappropriate nor suggestive in any way. Have you ever tried to crack a coconut? I don't care how rotten those things are. They are hard as shit. There's no way this woman could just pull this thing apart. But that's literally the point of the scene, that the coconuts are so dead inside that they can just pull them apart. Also, do you not know how powerful Polynesian people are? I wouldn't be surprised if they could just pull open a fresh coconut. Our traps in the East Lagoon, they're pulling up less and less fish. I'm sure what we could. We fish beyond the reef. No one goes beyond the reef. Despite all signs that this land is dying, Moana's father continues to refuse the ocean as an option. Probably because of that whoever that died that one time during that flashback we've yet to see. But still, it's stupid. Except it's not stupid, as you even admit that there's a reason for him to be this way in the upcoming flashback. He took a canoe, Moana. Ah yes, here's the flashback I was talking about, wherein someone close to the chief died, and he got deathly afraid of ever losing anyone again. Remind me again how this is different from Binding Nemo? Well, for one... Nemo is a fish. And secondly, Nemo isn't the main character of either of those movies. Marlin is in the first, and Dory is in the second. Moana is the main character in this movie. See the line where the sky meets the sea, it calls me. And right here, I'm going to praise the film for a powerful song while also shaming the film for having a current pop singer cover this awesome song in the credits. I'd be giving a sin back here were it not for the doubly sinful pop cover in the credits. So sadly, I'm left to sin this moment as normal because the movie is an idiot. I'm going to remove a sin here because hell f***ing yes. I agree, this was an amazing song, and to not have Aoli Carvalho sing this in the credits was a travesty. This movie false starts the heroine sea adventure we all know is going to happen anyway, but we get several near misses before she finally gets there. Jesus, it's my wedding night all over again. You sure you're not talking about your cousin? Because of the stupid pig, Moana's gonna get trapped underwater by the screenplay, which desperately wants to give the father's never leave the island argument some kind of reasoning or weight. Or I could have just gone with inconvenient coral is convenient. The problem is that Tui is right. The ocean is extremely dangerous. <laughs> uh, I don't even know why Pua got on the boat to begin with. Pigs hate water. It's f***ing biblical. Jeremy has never heard of Pig Beach. When I die... I'm going to come back as one of these. Literally. Not literally. She comes back as a watery representation of a ray. But even if she came back as a literal ray, that still wouldn't be a goddamn sin. Bang the drum. Grandma did say bang the drum, but despite the two sticks on top, this sh looks nothing like a drum. Grandma should have been more specific and said bang the upside down all wood horsey saddle looking thing. You are aware that this film explores oceanic culture, right? This is a slit drum, but I guess when Tala said drum, you were expecting this, am I right? Also, at the risk of sounding cynical and anti-ghost music, how the f*** does playing these old-ass moisture log drums wake up the fire ghosts and give her literal visions of her ancestors? Disney magic. It's a f***ing cartoon. We know the way. So basically this cave was an ancestral YouTube video waiting for someone to skip. There is no way you could go that I won't be with you. Hey, am I the only one that remembers a few minutes ago when this dying grandma could barely speak? Now she's an expositional fountain. Okay, but telling Moana that she'll always be with her isn't exposition, numbnuts. The mom, who barely qualifies for her character in this movie, decides to help send her off, even though I have no reason to believe that she has any clue why Moana is leaving. Moana has been trying to leave this whole film. Dude. Why do you need things spelled out for you like a six-year-old? Hell, that's disrespectful to six-year-olds. Movie doubles down on non-existent fishhook constellation. In a Disney film with magical islands, shape-shifting deities, and sentient water, Jeremy is upset that the sky has a fishhook constellation. But guess what? This constellation does actually exist. It's the tail of the constellation Scorpius, which is the fishhook that belongs to Maui a real figure in Polynesian mythology and is who The Rock's character in this film is based on. Next stop, Mo. If her only indication of where to go are the stars shaped like a hook in the sky, then how is she supposed to navigate during the day? Keep in mind, Moana has never sailed a boat in her life. So, you mentioned that she's following the stars, but question how she's supposed to navigate during the day. Hmm, you do know that there's a much closer star that's even better for navigation, especially during the day, right? 
right? Maybe don't go sailing until you actually have sailing skills? Just a thought. How does one gain sailing skills without sailing? I know what you meant to say was, don't go sailing alone, but because this video series is a satirical take on your video series, which is based on purposefully nitpicking, fuck you. <laughs> movie tries to make you think the character the film is named after just died, but movie is pretty delusional on that point, if you ask me. Jeremy doesn't realize this is a movie trope meant to elicit the feeling of being suddenly knocked out. What's really going to bake your noodle is if I suggested up to this point nothing supernatural has actually happened and that Moana is in a coma underwater and the rest of the movie is a dream brought on by her comatose state. But hey, that's just a theory. A bad theory. And... Dear movie, showing us the chicken first kills all the suspense that Moana might not have lived through the... Oh, f*** it. Moana is untouchable. Got it. Thanks for the chicken jokes. You just suggested that there is no way anyone would believe Moana is dead. So what the f***? Thankfully, the ocean storm deposited her in exactly the place she was hoping to find. What are the odds? Never mind. Don't tell me the odds. I don't want to know. You fail to realize that the ocean is obviously a character in the movie and is playing a part in helping Moana achieve her goal, but only after she attempts them for herself. I'm here to- oh, Of course, of course. Yes, 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 yes. Maui always has time for his fans. Maui has apparently been marooned here for like a thousand years and shit, but still thinks the first person he sees in all that time is a fan seeking an autograph. Either that or he's had tons of visitors here seeking autographs and just never stole their boats to leave the island. Do you need future Birdman to come on and tell you it's a joke again? Because I will go to the store again and he will sneak on this microphone so fast. We can't play this song, but The Rock is a way better movie musical singer than Russell Crowe. But that doesn't mean he's good. He's at least on pitch. He's passable. And that's cynical. In Jeremy's land of make-believe, something being good enough means it's not good enough. The Rock sings about killing an eel and burying its guts, and somehow a coconut tree grew from it. This movie is really playing fast and loose with evolution. Mythology! Why is Moana enjoying this? She was legit angry a second ago, but a song turns her around? And this song? Is she even listening to the lyrics? This is the cockiest song ever. But it's a great song. This joint would cheer anyone up. No, not that kind of joint. Huh. Hmm? Ah. Maui's conscience is his tattoo. Pointing things out on the screen. Now let's fatten you up, drumstick. <laughs> I admit, this is a funny joke, but this is everything wrong with CinemaSin, so therefore, this f***ing laugh. Okay, look, I really enjoyed this movie. I did. But this odd monkey coconut pirate side quest is f***ing crazy as balls, and not in a good way. I know we're dealing with gods and demigods, but I reject the notion that it means we also have to deal with monkey-like coconut pirates. I reject that firmly. Arbitrary line in the sand is arbitrary. Also, do those coconut monkeys f***ing smell the heart of Tafiti? Is that how that works? Why do you think the Kakamura are monkeys? They're just small people wearing coconuts. Look, I can get down with an all-knowing ocean helping Moana succeed. Not really, but for the sake of this sin, let's just pretend it's true. But I cannot get down with the same all-knowing ocean understanding the concept of a high five. Shit, why does Moana even understand what a high five is? But you're okay with every character, including a giant crab, all speaking perfect American English though, right? You're measuring the stars, not giving the sky a high five. Still confused as hell why you even know what a high five is. Next thing, you'll be fist bumping and elbow pounding. Skip. My people didn't send me. The ocean did. The ocean. Makes sense. You literally watched the ocean put her in the boat a few times, dick. Oh, hey, manipulating what the scene is attempting to say. Maui isn't suggesting that he doesn't believe that the ocean sent her. He's berating the ocean for specifically sending Moana. You know, the realm of monsters is a lot less scary when you realize it's also the realm of Ex Machina, because Maui basically ignores her down here, yet she frequently doesn't die. Jeremy continues to grossly misuse the term Deus Ex Machina, Ex Machina. I got something shiny for ya! The heart of Tefiti. Wait, earlier the monkey coconut pirates knew she had the heart of Tefiti simply because she took it out of its case. They smelled or sensed that sh It's magical. But here, the evil black light loving crab thinks she's holding up the heart by sight because it's not actually the heart. So my point is basically this. Is this heart mystically identifiable or not? No, that wasn't a point. That was a question. You see, this is the root of the problem with your question sins. You assume that you're making a point, except that if your question is answered, then it wouldn't be a sin. Logically, it only follows that the questions you are asking are not sins, but things that you simply do not understand. Man's discovery of Nanya. What's Nanya? Nanya business. 2017 movie probably displays 1950s era joke. Except this movie takes place 3,000 years ago, so Breda Maui created that joke, Kanapa Paiki. I mean, sure, he's bonded with Moana a tiny bit lately, but still, why did Maui agree to risk his life on this quest again? This looks dangerous as f You are aware that Maui is immortal, right? 
Maui only flies away here so we can Han Solo back into the climax later. Sorry, but it's the truth. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference. What is that? A giant ghost looking electric blue manta ray? Why, my grandma said she'd return as a manta ray. Is it possible that I don't dare hope that, I mean. All this bullshit. In preparation for this stunt, Tom Cruise actually swam down this distance to retrieve a mock heart of Tafiti, but was shocked to learn he'd been recast as a teenage female and lost the part to an authentic island actress. At this point, any normal reviewer would realize that these videos are called Everything Wrong With X Movie, and that stuff like this has nothing to do with the movie, and Jeremy just wanted to try out his cornball jokes. Also, movie's climax basically rips off the Black Widow lullaby from Age of Ultron. Okay. Full transparency. Jeremy made a shit ton of pop culture references before this one, and I would bore you all by pointing them out, so I chose this one as it's the most visually appealing, and we'll now give him 10 cents for all the others. See the light as it shines on 